Hi, it's Matt. Welcome back to the shop. And uh, today I'm going to try and quickly cover a subject that I've been trying to get my head around for quite a while. And I wanted to give like a definitive answer, but fuck me, it's difficult. <laughs> um, quick, very, very quick explanation. There's this thing called the COF, which is the coefficient of friction, right? And um, basically, it's a scale of friction that we can compare one thing to another, right? That's all you need. So, what you end up with is you end up with a graph. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to plot uh, COF versus temperature. Because we are talking in this video about carbon brake systems. And you might see loads and loads of videos out there saying, oh, yeah, carbon brake systems. You've got to wait for them to warm up until they can work properly. Which, on the face of what I'm about to tell you, seems counterintuitive, right? There are loads and loads of videos out there that say, oh, well, you've got to wait until these, these are carbon brake. You know, they'll be doing a motor GP thing or they'll be doing a fucking Formula 1 thing. But no one actually explains why. There's a reason why. It's be there's a reason why. There's also a reason why they don't explain it. It's because it's fucking difficult to explain. <laughs> so here it goes. So this this COF thing here. It's not very bright, that is it. It's almost the same colour as the board. This COF thing here is the coefficient of friction, right? So all you need to know from that is that it's the number of friction. It's a ratio between how much load something can take and how much it can be pulled by. So in essence, you've got a surface, you've got a mass of something in kilograms, right? And kilograms is just, it's basically a force, right? You can have kilograms force, which is basically just accelerating a mass. Job done, that's force. So basically you have the force of gravity loosely, Let's just say that, and then how, if you, how much you pull it. Now, if it has a mass of a kilogram, and you pull it with a kilogram's worth of force, if that makes sense, then that would be one to one. So that would be just a COF of one. Anything that has, and that's due to the, the resistance here, right, the friction, because one force is going here, like this, and the other one's perpendicular to it, right, which is two parallel surfaces have to slide against each other. You can even do it radially, so a shaft in a hole, but that's a bit more difficult because gravity is going one way. It gets really complicated for stuff like that. Doesn't matter. We're talking about the COF, so this ratio, this one-to-one -one malarkey, and it doesn't matter what the number is, just this is higher and this is lower to zero. That's all you need to know. It doesn't matter. Now, this is temperature, again at zero, going up to 100,000 million. Right, that way, in Kelvin, degree C, whatever you fucking want. It could be banana skin burning units, doesn't matter. Let's take something like steel. So usually what happens is that as you go hotter, it falls, right? Your COF, your f the ability for something to grip falls. Why? Well, because uh, stiffness, right? Atoms can move, right? It's like... Um, you can skid on stuff. Now, this is the problem with friction because is it van der Waals force? Is it static this, that? Is it mechanical locking? The problem with friction is adhesives and stuff really fuck it all up. But let's just forget adhesives and sticking things together. Let's just talk about metals, hard metals and hard ceramics and hard, just hard stuff. Let's forget all the other shit because bastards uh stuff like talc uh graphite um what's another one like that uh graphite talc or molybdenum um disulfide they have cofs that do this with temperature the fucking twats but <laughs> minerals and stuff non-metals uh now you might say well graphite that's almost carbon graphite's a bit of a funny one it depends which carbon you use and all the rest of it but we'll call that steel right so your steel discs so we'll call this one steel like that the blue one is carbon right so it starts off specifically lower 
but it's got this going on, right? So at, just say so we'll pick this line and we'll call that a thousand degrees C, right? Steel's fucking useless. Oh, I've, I've really done that. I've not really done that well, have I? <laughs> because that's actually the temperature where the carbon really does its job well. <laughs> let's just do. <laughs> let's just do that, right? It's it's actually worse than that. I'm fucking this up. Something wicked. You said a simple explanation, Matt. <laughs> there we go. Try something like that. That's better. So, as your brakes start, when you've got normal steel discs, that didn't ring, I was expecting that to ring. You've got normal steel discs. As it gets hotter, they fuck off, right? They fade. That's what brake fade is. And it's also a bit through the pad material, but generally it's just the system as a whole, using metal discs with whatever's. When you use um, carbon pads on carbon discs, this happens. Why this happens, oh, fuck, this is the difficult bit. It's all right just to say that, right? Anyone could just fucking give you that list like that. Everyone could just draw it and say, it's better at temperature. This is the complicated bit. I don't have an easy answer, but I will give you some of the things. This whole friction when you put loading on is about shear. So shear is, let's get rid of all this shit. Shear, well, no, it's this. It's this arrangement, right? Shear is about that moving that way and that moving that way with a force between them. It can be one static and one moving. It can be this one static and this one moving. It can be both fucking moving in opposite directions. Weird angles, all sorts of shite. You can even do rotational. There's that. There's also then heat transfer. So there's a thing called surface, <laughs> surface heat and uh, volume, volume heat in a sense, which is the the the, vol uh, the heat at the surface, which makes sense, and inside it, you know, as a thermal mass. There's ablation. So the, the Apollo command module with its ablative heat shield, unlike the shut and bit, yeah, bit, bit, bit above. Um, so there's the resistance to heat. There's also how you crumb away and lose material to expose a fresher, rougher material to a degree, also the heat you lose through doing that, like ejecting it, ablation, you're taking energy away. So you're constantly providing a new surface, so there's ablation, there's that way as well. There's, um, oh, what else was there? There's some really funky stuff. The thermal expansion, how the molecules relocate when they get to other temperatures, does it weaken them, does it harden them? There's also, uh, compressive work hardening of surfaces. So in a sense, like the skatability, that would be the opposite version of um, ablation to a degree. So basically what happens is, <laughs> this is what it looks like. So you pick just up here and just say that's 800 degrees C. Oh yeah, your carbon ones are a lot better. Lower down the duct kick in. This is why in MotoGP, you will see them using uh, cast iron because cast iron is really good at lower temperatures when it's wet, because that's the problem, is you're constantly getting the discs wet, which cools them down. You will see them on certain... Th uh, certain um, nowadays, because they run the carbon discs, you'll slam on the brakes, the temperature will go up to here, right, and then it'll start to fall back down again. Now, it could just fall back down to here, and your brakes are shite, or if you put a fucking carbon fiber cover on them because they've been air cooled, if you put a cover on them, then they only fall down to here. So they're in this sweet range up here where we kind of want to keep the brakes, you know, the maximum over here and then back. And we just want to rock around this, the, the peak. That's what we want to do. That's where we want to keep the brakes. So that's why uh, these brakes have these covers shroud sometimes, stuff like that. Uh, there's a there's discussions about when you slipstream someone, uh, your tires and your brakes can actually be too hot. Where the guy in front, even though you're going to come round him, you're going to come round him. You've picked up more speed because um, you're not being aerodynamically blasted directly by the air. You're punching a hole through the guy in front of you. You've already punched a hole through, but you're also not getting the cooling. So your tyres were too hot, right? They're getting too hot or they haven't cooled down as much as his has. 
So with tyres, this is the thing. With tyres, they have a bit of a weird plateauing in grip with temperature. You can get them too hot. And is that fucking battery gone? Oh, it's not. It's not gone. It's going. Um, yeah, the tyres. You know, you can get too hot with tyres. Same kind of thing. You get them too... You've get. You got to get them up to temperature, but you get them too hot, they fucking start dying and stuff like that. So that isn't the... Uh, uh, a solid perfect answer it's just that these brakes have a range in which they work properly and you want to that's bollocks sorry but that is bollocks yeah fucking lies 22 minutes i recorded 12 and it died any road yeah so without the camera dying um it's all about a balancing act of trying to keep it in these things so what they'll do is this is why free practice is also uh, really important in these races, there'll be teams, you know, they'll have a brakes team and a suspension team. They look at their data and say, fuck me, these brakes are cooling down far too much on that straight. Um, and everywhere's okay, so we can put the covers on. The problem is, is if you put the covers on in places where you're heavy, heavy braking and you want them to cool down, you've now fucked yourself. So it's about getting the balance, you know what I mean? And they'll probably tell the riders, you know, you're going to better braking on the straights to give it more, put on this chicane and that bit there. You might be not, you know, your feel isn't going to be as good as it is on that fucking straight. And it's also feedback the other way. The riders will say, it's good everywhere, but on that fucking straight, when I get on that straight, I go like that and the brakes, they're not there, and I need it there to dive into, just say, corner one or something like that. Like I said, I'd love to go into some serious depth I don't know enough about the sub... Well, I, I can do. I can sit there and read these papers bloody forever. Um, but I'm not a material expert when it comes to friction systems and stuff like that. A lot of this, though, a lot of this work was done for aviation, for their brakes. So that's where most of it comes from. That's where most of the R&D comes from, testing materials, blah, blah, blah. Any road, hope that makes sense. I'll see you in a bit.